Welcome to Tommy Sky. Let's go. We're here today at Good Behavior. Woohoo! Come on, guys. Let's go inside. Welcome to Good Behavior, guys. This is owned by one of my favorite friends, really good friend, master chef, good person. His name is Michael Lamb, aka Badger. And this is his store right over here. Mr. Badger, say hello. How you hello to everybody here. Welcome to Good Behavior, guys. <laughs> this is awesome. This is Eric. This is Eric. This is unscripted. We're here today at Good Behaviors where the ice cream is made fresh and the subs are tender and delicious. I want to introduce to you guys the partners that started this whole franchise, this whole company. Hi, my name's Eric Chow. Uh, I'm one of the partners of Good Behavior. Uh, I handle all the stuff uh, that is not the cooking, that is not uh, the creative side of things. Hey guys, uh, my name is Michael. I'm, I'm the chef and the other partner of Good Behavior. And uh, I do a lot of the recipe development and uh, most of the food. You guys are my very good friends. I've known Michael for about, hold on Mike. 10 years? Ten years? At, least, at least, I think. I've known Eric for about 10 days. 10 days. 10 days. 10 days. 10 days. Yes. <laughs> I love it. We all already became a family though. Michael is going to show me around the kitchen, give us a tour while this guy still has to do some paperwork. Thank you, watch out. Let's go. Let's go. Alright guys, we're in the back where the nobody can go to. The VIP secret access. VIP access. Thank you to Michael Lamb. <laughs> Badger, thank you so yes, much sir, for yes, this sir. tour. He's gonna show us a tour and how everything gets made here. The right. ice cream, the sub, and everything. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, so this is uh, this is our cold room. So this is where all the ice cream gets churned. Um, so usually what we do is Ooh. we close this door and everything is kind of uh, controlled in temperature. Uh, this is our ice cream machine just right here, which is uh, this is our baby. This is a pretty awesome. Uh, little guy, this guy can hold seven liters of ice cream all at the same time. Wow. Uh, which is pretty nice. And I'll do a little demo just to show you guys. But if you guys have a look just uh, right in here. Come, let's go look at some. Uh, you can see how that's that's the spin when it's when it's freezing and then when it's extracting, it's that much faster. So you can see the clockwise and counterclockwise uh, work. Oh, but yeah. this this is a, uh, it looks like it's uh, not much, but this guy, uh, this guy's a little beast, which is which is great to see. Uh, I'll show you guys the fridge and the freezer. So our our fridge is uh, pretty small. It's it's not too crazy. It's okay. At least you have a fridge. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So this is our fridge. Uh, you guys can come on in. Oh wow. Yeah. So we try to keep see? all of our subs organized, labeled, date, everything. Yep. yep. And then Perfect. all of our uh, ice cream stuff is just on this side up top here. You can see all the add-ins, the caramel, the fudge, peanut butter. Uh, yeah, this is a, it's a nice, it's, it should be nice and organized. Pork. Oh, nice. Yeah. Badger, you have everything. So this one's a little small, but yeah. the freezer is probably one of my favorite things. Ooh, here we go with the freezer, guys. Come on in. So this, is wow. a freezer. this is a walk-in freezer. This is a, this is a monster. This is a monster. I've, I've never seen one of these walk-in freezers with two doors. So we enter oh, from one side, we can come out the other, other side. All our pints are nicely organized. You can see all the stickers facing the, the same way. These are upside down uh, because we made these yesterday. All the ice cream sets to the bottom and then we flip them right oh, after. Oh, you see that? Secret technique, man. <laughs> now Wait you guys that. know. See that? Flip them upside down. Look at them. Look at the flavors. Let's see some of these flavors. Milk tea, Madagascar, vanilla, tiramisu, torta de la nona. Damn, this guy makes his ice creams all from scratch. Fresh. All from do. scratch and fresh. Cream, milk, sugar, eggs, that's Everything. It. So these are legit. And I told you guys, this guy went to Australia to study, <laughs> to study more deep depth into cooking, not just shebang shebang. He goes, he's really dedicated. So I know these ice creams are gonna, get, are gonna be really good and I'm gonna get some. It's freezing, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> So this is where we make all our ice cream. So you guys can see all the freezers that are kind of lying around right now. These are all from our pop-ups uh, when we were uh, opening other shops within the city uh, throughout the summer. So next year we'll take these freezers back out uh, and then we'll, we'll serve uh, different parts of the city again. Uh, but this is where we make our ice cream. So you can see the size of this pot. This pot probably can hold about 50 liters at a time. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a big one. And we, we cook all our ice cream in here. 
uh, and it's very specific. That's why we have these two thermometers sitting down here. We cook it to a specific temperature. Once it hits that temperature, we strain it right away. And you know, if you think about it, the scrambled eggs, if you cook it too much, it's gonna be that. And if you don't cook it enough, it's just gonna be water. So um, ice cream is under, uh, I think I underestimated how challenging it really is. Mm. Uh, but this pot makes it so much easier where we can kick, cook so much uh, at a time. Sick, wow. yo. Yeah. I never knew it was that difficult. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just freezing the whole thing. That's what I thought as it. well. And, and was so I wrong? So it was actually an actual technique. Look, look, there's big bags of icing that this guy has. Yeah. Sugar. We came from the bottom all the way to the top. Yeah, Seriously. If, if you guys come in the summer, these three machines right here, uh, we, do, we do an ice cream donut. Uh, so what we do is we plug this guy in. Uh, Customer comes in, guest comes in, we tell them to choose their ice cream flavor. We cut open the donut, we put the donut with the ice cream inside, we close it. And after 15 seconds, you have a hot donut on the outside and your ice cream is still frozen inside. So that's something we did in the summer and everyone went crazy for it and we loved it as well. But uh, come next, probably May or June, this Ooh. will be back. May and June guys, stay tuned. Damn, that's yeah. like some Japanese thing that you that, see on YouTube. That was cool, yeah. I, th I think the first time we saw that, we saw that in Asia, and then we saw it happen in, oh, in, in, in LA. Uh, and we thought we'd never saw one in Bring Toronto. Here, These right? three machines are all from uh, somewhere in, in the States. See and it took, it took, I think, like six weeks to grab. So see? it took some time, but it's, they're here now. So Progress, man. It's good. It's good. good job, brother. Yes, sir, yes, good sir. job, man. What is this? What is this? So this is our ordering board. Yeah, so this is something that for us, I think is very, very important to make sure that we're organized, we're efficient. So you can see all the produce we order it there. All our, so GFS is, and Kenway does all our dry goods, our sugars, things like that. Dairy, so in terms of, you know, our systems and how we try to stay organized, I think these things are all really important. Oh, very uh, important. Yeah, yeah. This is almost as important as, you know, as greeting our customers and our guests. So. I see you have the kosher salt. Yes, sir. Only the best. We love this. So kosher salt, guys. A little, a little secret for you guys. Really secret for the mash itself. Yeah, we we put Chef. so all of our ice cream. We put a little bit of salt as well. Kosher. Um, and we put the salt just to bring out all the flavors. So of, tell of the everything. people there why not Himalayan salt. Kosher salt is, is good for us because it's clean. We can control the amount of, of, of a salinity that goes in. There's, it's, it's, it's easy for us to work with. It dissolves well in ice cream. We love, we love this, uh, the diamond crystal. We, we think it's probably the best salt that you can use. That's affordable. That's uh, affordable. I think, I think when you get a Himalayan, Himalayan salt that's about this size, it's probably the same price as that. So, um, yeah, we, that? We, love, we love the See kosher. That? You guys can find that. That's a, that's a good one uh, to keep at your house. All those little key things, <laughs> just down to salt matters. <laughs> it does. It matters. It really does. Come on, guys, let's continue. This is our office. Yeah. Check out their Mushroom. office. May not be much, but... <laughs> It's not that much, but it's, it's it, baby. it does its job. Because you know why? They focus more on the business than having a fancy office, you know? You don't need some fancy ass computer. Yeah, that's true. You know, you, the more important stuff is what we just saw. <laughs> the freezer, all these utilities, man. That's all you, that, those are more important than a big office. That is true. I'm so proud of you, Basil. So proud of you. <laughs> thank you, so thank you, thank you. you. All right, let's go. We're going to wait till these customers go or when it dies down and maybe we can make our own subways. All right, guys, let's do this. Some gloves if you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to make sure we got to stay sanitary. Okay, so, uh, these are just uh, our simple sesame buns. Sesame uh, we buns? We get these made for us at this size and we think these are probably some of the best buns in the city. Um, I, I love a nine inch bun, so sometimes when we get these, these I, I do a little trim. Uh, on both ends and then I make a little incision just right there just to open it up all right there you go. now we used to work together so <laughs> he doesn't need to teach me any of these cutting skills it's like steak and sushi days <laughs> I know right so we're gonna open up slightly still keeping that in Nice. And then we're just gonna rip. This is what we do that's a little bit different than everyone else. We actually rip the inside out. Ooh, rips the inside. Because we want you to come and eat some meat, some cheese, and some vegetables. Oh. Okay, next up, next up. This is Pop House. I know he's very good at this. This is uh, this is how we used to do our uh, saucing at, at Joey. Uh, <laughs> look how organized. Post. Come guys, look how organized this is and clean it is. I want you guys to see how clean it is. What kind of sauce is this that we're putting on so, Badger? So this is a this is a bomba mayo. This is our house mayo. So we make uh, we make uh, we take some chilies and we preserve them overnight. 
Mm. Uh, and then we mix that into our mayo, and it's uh, it's not too spicy, but it gives a bit of a, a fermented flavor. I th we think this is good for all of our uh, classic subs. Uh, perfect. Okay, so next step. Uh, so in here we have our, uh, this is our jardinera mix. So uh, there's some uh, pickled vegetables, there's a bit of mayo in there, some chili as well. This is what I think makes the sub. I think this is a great, uh, great condiment to cut through all the fat, cut through all the meat. Um, and yeah, we spread this all on the top from one end to the other. Ooh, wee, wow, this looks like a coleslaw. Yeah, this is, this is, I think this is what advanced, makes this up. Advanced coleslaw. So good. It can, I'm sure you guys can guess how chaotic it can get sometimes. So we make all these little sets uh, before service pre -sets, starts. Presets, presets. Exactly, they're called presets. So you can find five different types of meats. So there's our mortadella, that's right here. You'll see our prosciutto di parma, it's right there. Our soppressata, which is right there. Mm -hmm. Our Genoa salami, right there. And then our cheese, which is provolone cheese. That's all I and in understood. Five, I forget. Oh, and prosciutto cotto, just right there. I knew there was one more missing. So there's five meats, and then our cheese. Wow. Uh, we think this is this is a great combination. And then we put the cheese uh, on the top. Ole. Oh, on top. Okay. On top, yeah. Okay, okay. Perfect, perfect. See? Okay, next step. Uh, this, these are just thinly sliced red onions. We throw them on these trays just to drain all the water. Ooh, okay. So and we, I just we, put a little bit. And we throw all these into cold water just to just to remove some of that sharp uh, raw oh, flavor. Okay, see? Yeah. Techniques, techniques. The next step, uh, tomato. Tomato. So I like to put five tomatoes. This is uh, up to everyone how much they would like to put on. Uh, but just five shingled on just like that. All right. I love tomatoes. They're good for your skin. <laughs> Our next step now is uh, shredded iceberg lettuce. Shredded. This, this is, aside from the jardinera, I think this is the second most important. Uh, I kind of just pinch it a little and then I put it on. There, I don't think there is ever too much iceberg lettuce. So I put a generous, generous, generous amount. Generous. Uh, you that can is see how much generous. that really is. And this is the same amount of lettuce we put. Uh, when anyone else comes in as well. <laughs> then last step, we put salt on our tomatoes. Ooh. And then this is our sub dressing. This is just some red wine vinegar, uh, some oregano, and some olive oil. Oh, we just go. Easy to make at home. Easy to make at home, exactly. This is the next part. This, this, is, uh, this is where it can get a little bit tricky. Uh, so I usually take my gloves off just for this so that my, the tape doesn't stick to my hand. Good thing we washed our hands, boys and girls. Good thing we did. So I take, I take the paper and I do a nice little roll over. Two papers. Two okay. papers and two papers because one is a little bit too small. Uh, and then we do one fold. And then before we do the second one, we roll slightly and then we do the second one. So oh, if one okay. pops up, the other one is still intact. Oh, I see. So this whole time I'm pulling to make sure it's nice and tight. Pavo is the king at rolling, as we all know, <laughs> but <laughs> smoke up. And then we do uh, one tape and then I just do a little second one. And then this is the fun part when we slice it open for you guys to see. You can see all the jardinera, the meat, the cheese, the lettuce. See all those layers just ready to be eaten. Mmm, that is so beautiful. All right, my turn. As all chefs do, they bang on the for no reason. All right, let's do this. Ooh, oh, look at that. Look that at that. is beautiful. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna go munch this out because I'm hungry. Thank you, Badger, for showing us how to make a sub from your way, the special way, good behavior way. That was pretty good behavior. Good behavior. <laughs> it was, it was. <laughs> All right, let's go eat. All right, guys, I'm here with my main man, Eric, and he's gonna share us about the business side of, of how to run this business. Let him know. Yeah, um, Michael and I, uh, and again, as we talked about earlier, we worked together in another restaurant. We kind of figured out where one person's role and responsibilities would start and the other person's would begin. Um, to be honest, Michael and I both take care of a lot of the uh, the different operational and business needs and admin needs of, of the company. Uh, for example, I'm old. Uh, Michael handles all the communication through social media. I'm more of like an email letters kind of guy. Uh, in terms of operations um, with this type of business, 
there's so much of uh, the speed factor going into it. It's a quick service type of business. There's less like wine and dine, less of an hour and a half, two hour dinner. Uh, so to be honest, on that side of stuff, I'm just not as involved. Uh, my focus tends to be uh, admin heavy, uh, kind of working with Michael to figure out, you know, what does the next year look like? Uh, when can we market? Uh, what demographics are we going after? What areas do we think we'll be able to use to speak uh, to that demographic? Um, yeah, and because we're such a small and, and kind of like a, a new business, self-funded business, dynamic business, we, we tend to do different things every single day, which makes it interesting. What, uh, what are some uh, difficult tasks that you had to come across? Or, or name at least one. one. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, um, I, I think the biggest, uh, the biggest challenge, Michael, and I had at the beginning, which was also, you know, at the same time, the biggest opportunity that we got, uh, was that we opened this business, we started this business in a period of like, incredible uncertainty so uh, Michael and I did our first pint uh, in February of, of uh, this year of 2021 which you know at the time you didn't know if things were open if people could come visit you uh, other than selling something online you never knew if someone could come into your shop or meet you in person we also had no idea of you know whether or not we can firm up a lease whether we could start a bricks and mortar part of our business uh, because all that stuff was really uncertain. The other side of it is just like with food and beverage, you have a product, especially with ice cream, that literally melts. I think one of my friends said it to me, which I didn't appreciate at the time, but he said to me, look, oh, it's funny, you can actually watch your money melt. And that's something that we always manage. Like, I've never talked with another human being so much about freezers in my life. Uh, but that's probably the other side of the challenge for us, that like, you have to keep your product at all times at this negative 20 degree uh, holding, which is an incredibly difficult to do. Wow, that's, that's very interesting and I just learned that right now. Any tips that you want to give out these viewers that will maybe want to start an ice cream business? like? What's the number one tip that Don't you do it in Toronto, we're gonna crush you. No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think the hardest thing is starting uh, because you're gonna find a million reasons you know, why you're not ready, why you don't have the right amount of funding, and that might be true. I'm not saying you shouldn't plan and organize yourself. Um, but taking that first step forward, it's not really a step forward. Taking that first step off a cliff, uh, if you don't take that step, you're, you're never gonna move on to the next step. Whatever that step might be, you know, if you feel that you're an amazing baker, you wanna make something, just try making it, see if anybody's willing to buy your product. That's your first test. If you don't put yourself out there, even if you're gonna fail, you'll never really give yourself that chance. Oh, yeah, starting is hard. Thank you for that yeah, advice. You're welcome, man. All you have to do is just start. And that's how I did. I was hesitating to start these even, these YouTube videos. You yeah. know what I mean? But you just got to start. Thank you, Eric, for that interview. Yeah, thank, thank you, man. For sure. Nice the yeah. side. Okay. All right, guys. I want to say thank you to Eric and to Michael for showing me around their store, their beautiful store. Good behaviors. Check them out. Please tell them where you're located. Yeah, we're at uh, 342 <laughs> Westmoreland Avenue North. We're in the uh, Geary Strip. Uh, yeah, come check us out. We're open every single day, uh, 11 a.m. To, to 8 p.m. You hear that, guys? Thank you, guys. This is thank beautiful you, thank you. ice yeah, thank cream. You, thank, you. thank you for the tour. Nice oh, man. man. <laughs> Until next nice time. Yeah. I want to cook next time. We'll trade it. We'll trade it. Oh, <laughs> I got, oh, wait. Actually, I got something for you guys. Cut it. Last thing, I want to give these guys T-shirts. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, thank, thank you, thank, thank you. you. I hope you guys love it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, excited to wear this. I'm excited to wear your ah, shirt too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for tuning in, tuning in. Stay lit, stay humble, and stay united. Peace! Three six world of your shit, motherfucker. I be coming with the bread like some fucking cheeseburgers. Running this shit like I'm jumping over hurdles. Niggas smoking on the colors like the Ninja Turtles. Niggas wanna hate steel, running their mouth. Still talking about shape, what they really mad about.